We've gotten to the point where we're just about done for the night. Hold on, let me. Or you'll see it on the news. Ah. I'm trying to. We're watch, we, we have our inspiration going. We're watching some uh, All right, we'll Zootopia. Yep. We just got done watching Kung Fu Panda 3. Got some Netflix going. Netflix and fursuit build. It works. Next, instead of Netflix and chill, it's Netflix, Netflix and build. <laughs> so, Isn't this this most adorable face? Oh my gosh. We are almost done. She has a big cavernous hole in her noggin now because there's going to be a mesh panel put in there. It's a hidden vent up underneath the fur because you lose most of the heat through the top of your head, right? So, instead of having foam there, we put a hidden vent in instead so that the air can go through the fur instead of being trapped into the foam. And I don't get overheated. Yes, <laughs> which, you know, allows for more suit wear time and, you know, it's it increases the safety of the wearer so that they don't overheat and have a risk of heat stroke or heat exhaustion in their suit. Um, if they're not where they can, you know, immediately take a break or if it suddenly gets hot due to being in a crowd, which is really good. And when you're in the costume contest, it's usually a two hour wait before you even get to the stage. So yes. This is really, really nice. Very important. If you I can't do. fit a fan in there, which ours, this fit is so snug, you, we can't fit a fan in here and a battery pack. So we just do the hidden vent up in the top, and sometimes um, in the sides, which make it easier to hear, too, um, if you can target where the ears are on the person that you're making it for. And also so. remember, drink plenty of water. Yes, always have a bottle of water with you, and a straw is nice, but if you've got a movable jaw, you can just pop your jaw open, or the way I make these, the jaw is separate from the head, so you can pop the head up and take a drink of water if you need to. You can show people your face if you're in a place where you need to be identified. Like the zoo. Yeah, like the zoo. Um, or, you know, if you're going to uh, to the park as well. Sometimes, um, you know, if you're at the park, even if you're just taking pictures there, somebody might go, there's some weirdo at the park with a costume on. You'll be able to identify yourself to the police officer that has come up to you and going, what are you doing out here? And and always be sure to have your ID or driver's license on you. Please, please do. It's very important to always have your ID with you when you're fursuiting. Um, but I yeah, um, but if we're, this is, this is turning out really good. Um, I can't wait to finish it. This is actually a really good mock-up of how Stardust looks underneath her fur. So I'll be able to uh, replicate replicate Stardust again. I would like to redo her one day because she was the first fursuit I ever made. And the inside of her head is terrible. It does not look like this. I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh, show them the fur. The fur? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, oh, I got a foam bit. Boom boom. <laughs> Alright, we ordered fur from Distinctive Fabric. Distinctive Fabric is like the place to order fur from, especially when you're making fursuit material when you're making fursuits. This stuff is very soft and you pull the fur back and you don't see the backing very much at all, which is good. And it was only $16 a yard, which is really cheap. Something like this at Joann's costs anywhere from $20 to $40 a yard without a coupon or without it being on sale. So save yourself the hassle. I mean, you end up spending like $20 on shipping depending on how much you, you order. But, I mean, it's it's cheaper in the long run to get it mm -hmm. from Distinctive Fabrics or get it from Fabric.com. Fabric.com has fur available in half yards. It costs a little more than what the half price of the yard would cost if you just cut the price of the yard in half. Um, because they are cutting it for you, so you're paying a little bit for the convenience of having a half yard. But it's one of the only websites that sells the plush fur like this. Um... 
Which this is the monkey shag, I believe. And also, if you look at the back of it here, it's not like the, the fur that you get at Walmart or most... Um, it's not scratchy. Yeah. And it's also thicker. Yep. So that you, you don't see... See, you kind of see the little holes here. But the holes are bigger on and more plasticky on the fur that you get from most... Uh, the retail stores. Retail stores, yeah. Or Walmart. And it's a lot better. See, it even shines. It looks like golden marmoset fur. It's so pretty and soft. And we're going to put that in some white fur. Now, the white fur we have oh, is the cheapy fur that you can get at fabric stores or Walmart. But it's we, going on there. We had to, uh, we were having to use what we've got. And we're having to, um... We're having to use what we've got, and we're having to be very budget conscious when we make this. So, we already had white fur, so we're going to use what we have. We can always, you know, redo it and remake it later if we want, really wanted to. But it should mesh with this pretty well. Because this isn't the highest quality stuff they have on the site, but it's really, it's a lot better than what you're going to find in most stores. Yes. Which is good. And you want to get something that'll last, because yeah. if you don't, you'll just have to remake your suit again. Or you'll have to tear all the face off, tear tear the face off of this and re-duct tape it and then re-sew it. Now, so. you have to explain about the duct tape. Oh, you use duct tape, you cover this whole thing in duct tape, then you mark it with lines in certain areas um, to create seams. So and then you cut cut it off in the seam area, and then you flatten it out as much as possible to make patterns out of it to cut out your fur, and then you sew it together and just put it over it kind of like a pillowcase. I mean, for lack of a better way to put it, it's just it's form fitting and it just slips over it like a slip cover, and then you just glue it in place. But hopefully this one will turn out good. We've got a little nose mocked up on it. You can see. Yeah, now eventually the nose is going to be made out of what's called Sculpty. Sculpty is an awesome clay. Tika got a new kind that they have called Souffle. Oh. Hang on, I think my bag is under your feet. Oh, it's next to my foot there. She got this stuff called Souffle. Which is like Sculpey Light. It's very lightweight. It's not very heavy. So it must be, um, it's very fluffy. And you have to bake this. Yeah, you have to bake it and it'll get hard. But the good thing is that she already got it in black. So we don't have to paint it or anything if we don't want to. Now, if we wanted to, we could, you know, texture it with um, stone spray paint. That's, it's kind of bumpy when it has a bumpy finish to it to look like stonework or cement. But, uh, and then we can, you know, like put Plasti Dip over it to give it a rubbery texture. That's how I've done my noses. But with this, if we don't do that, it would actually be better and more durable because if it gets scratched or anything, it's not going to show up as yeah. much as the other one would. Plus, you have to remember that we're doing a World of Warcraft character, so they do have a kind of a toony look to them. So the non-textured nose would actually be better. Now her eyes, when we get started on them, they're going to be green. Are we going to have do flat eyes or are we doing follow me eyes on this one? Follow me eyes. Okay. So basically the eyes are going to be set back in the head about an inch so that it gives the optical illusion of the eyes always looking at the camera no matter where you're standing they are always looking at you and it's a it's a really neat optical illusion especially for you know photo sessions because you never have to worry about looking at the camera because you're always looking at the camera <laughs> you don't know I mean? even it's the nice thing about fursuits is you never have to worry about what face you're making or if you're making a weird face and taking a picture because you're always going to look cute when you're wearing one of these Yes, but whatever you do, don't let your body say, I'm exhausted. Always yes. try to be perky. Yep, it helps to have big exaggerated movements because in fur, things get lost. Little tiny movements get lost, so you want to be like big and animated and yeah. And you don't want to be... Oh, it can. And you don't want to be that uh, 
Hang on a second. Somehow I turned this backwards. Anyway, you don't want to be that creepy person that just stands there and doesn't do any movement at all. So anyway, but that's it for this session, and we'll talk to you later. Bye! Let's see what we've gotten done. What I've gotten done.